Hey guys, welcome to the channel and today I'm going to show you how to inflate a tire using one of these uh, CO2 cartridges or commonly referred to as bombs and if you're new to the channel please consider subscribing it'll really help me out a lot and let's do this thing So having a closer look at the actual CO2 canisters themselves, you get two different sizes. This is the 16 gram one, the smaller one, and is more normally used for things like uh, road bikes with the smaller tubes. And then you get a bigger one like this, which is the 25 gram one. And this is used for uh, mountain bikes, obviously, because it's got a much higher volume of air. And then to actually inflate the tire, you get different adapters, and this is my favorite one as you can see it's uh, still quite dirty in that but uh, in this one you basically just take it you screw the canister on until it gets tight which I'm not going to do right now and then to actually inflate the tire you push this on the valve and then you slowly turn this out like that until it starts filling up the air and when it's full you just turn it again to stop it you leave it like that and whatever CO2 is left in, you can put in your back pocket and off you go. And when you need it again, you can use it again. There are other adapters like these two here. And normally in a race, I actually have this configuration. So as you can see, this one's got a nice little plastic spacer here, which the actual connector tightens down onto. So you obviously cannot pierce the cylinder like that. Put that in your back pocket during a race. If you have a flat, you can quickly just take this out pump the tire, put it back in, and then off you go. And then this one over here, unlike these other two, that which are just for Presta, these only support Presta, these two ones here, but this one supports both Schrader and Presta, and this one works exactly the same as this one. You put it on the valve, and you press down like that to actually let the air in. So I'll just quickly show you the difference between a Presta and a Schrader valve. So a Presta valve is normally found on all modern mountain bikes, especially tubeless ones. And as you can see over here, it's, the valve setup is um, created, so it's got this little turn out section over here, which when turned out, you can then obviously inflate the tire, it allows the valve to go up and down. When you then finish, you turn this little part over here until it gets tight and then that seals it against the inside and no air can come out. So obviously when you need to inflate the tire, especially with a CO2 canister, first make sure that you release this. Normally press once or twice just to make sure air comes out if your tire is inflated. And then place the adapter over the actual pressed uh, valve like that. And then press down and it'll fill up the tire. If we look at Schrader, Schrader valves are normally found on car tires and uh, older mountain bikes. And it looks like this. As you can see, a much bigger valve compared to the Presta valve. So obviously this type of connection here will not fit over that. But then you do get these ones over here like this that uh, will accept both Presta and Schrader. So depending on what type of valve you have on your mountain bike or bicycle, uh, you must make sure that the adapter you get for the CO2 cartridge or canister is the correct one for the tube that you're going to be using or the valve on the tube that you're going to be using. So as I said, this is uh, Presta and the other one here is Schrader. So just before we inflate a tire, many of these cartridges come with uh, a protective seal like that that you actually put over the cartridge. And what that does is protects your hand against this actual canister because as the gas gets released out of this canister, it freezes. And if your hand is, if you're holding it like that, it can actually burn your hand. The, 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 it gets so cold that it can cause like a, a freezer burn on your hand. So you need to either be wearing a cycling glove or some sort of protection, like a little sleeve like that to protect your hand from the actual uh, canister itself. 
Now once you've actually inflated the tire, sometimes what happens is you should not just take this immediately off because this can also sometimes freeze onto the valve. You should wait one or two seconds before releasing it like that. Or some people take a little bit of water from their bottles, spray it on the valve and then pull it off before taking it off just to make sure that it's not frozen anymore. And once again, I'm going to say I prefer the ones that you push on as opposed to screw on. Especially when these things get cold, they can freeze, like I say, onto the actual valve. And then when you turn it off, it'll turn the core. There's a core inside here out. And then all the air will basically come out again as you remove the adapter. As I mentioned, you just take the canister. You screw it into the valve until it gets tight. You won't hear any gas leaking out or anything like that. You just tighten that onto it as tight as it'll go and then it's already pierced the cylinder. So you're good to go. If I had to push this in the front, uh, CO2 would come out. So you're not going to hear any gas coming out or any release of gas. It's now ready to pump. Another thing to remember is when you're pumping the tire, you shouldn't actually have the valve at the bottom because when you release this air or the CO2, it's obviously coming in on a lot of force. And if you've got any type of sealant, the sealant is going to be sitting at the bottom of the tire. And when this uh, CO2 actually hits the sealant, it's going to basically uh, cure it immediately and it's going to become hard in your tire. So all the sealant is then going to be stuck at the bottom of the tire after you've inflated it. And as you ride, you're going to have this uneven or unweighted tire going around. And you can actually hear that if you ride on a, a tar road or something like that. It makes like a a sound where you can actually hear it's not an even sound running that means your sealant has basically all dried in one spot so the best advice is to obviously have it at the top or on the side here so, so this tire I have completely deflated it's got absolutely no pressure in whatsoever zero don't know if it's going to focus in there and then uh, let's see how much pressure you can get from one CO2 canister Okay, to inflate the tire, just take the actual valve connector itself, push it on there, push down to release the gas. Then it starts to fill up. See, it's already getting hard. In fact, it's... It's completely hard as you can see I don't know if you can see but it's now frozen completely here the cylinder has actually gone frozen as well so we'll just leave it for a few seconds before taking it off and that comes to 14.5 uh, psi so that's not bad with one um, Obviously, it's the bigger one. It's the 25 gram cartridge. You can pump to 14.5 psi. So, guys, it's as easy as that. And as you can see, the cylinder is now frozen. And I can assure you, it's pretty cold. So, uh, definitely wear a glove when you do that. And when you get home as well, you should let the CO2 out of the tire and then pump it up again using uh, your normal pump. So looking at the positives, obviously they're quite light, easy to carry, and they inflate your tire very quickly. From a negative point, um, if you have more than one puncture, obviously you need more than one bomb that you're carrying with you. And uh, these things can get quite expensive, and they're not that uh, friendly to the environment, because what do you do with all these canisters when you're finished with them? But other than that, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. And again, please don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.